just tell me uh, what you're doing today here. Oh, so I'm Matthew Wells, I'm a professor at the University of Toronto and we've got a so-called Slocum Glider which is owned by the University of Windsor, the Rayon Group. Um, we're hopefully going to deploy it in the lake. Um, so right now the temperature of the lake is below 4 degrees and when the water warms up to 4 degrees is the temperature maximum density. So right now the whole lake's probably mixing vertically. Once it moves above 4 degrees then you start the summer stratification. So we're going to hopefully launch this today and it'll go back and forth from here towards Rochester for the next 20-25 days. And so we we'll, should be able to see that transition as we warm up through 4 degrees and we start the summer conditions. So that'll be when we might get algal bloom, start algal blooms and yeah. And what, will it be on its own then? Yeah, so it's an autonomous vehicle. It then goes down and then up, down and then up. So it does a zigzag across the lake. How many zigzags? Like a hundred? Yeah, yeah. I think like, as, it, as it falls, it goes forward, I think three metres for every metre it sinks. If it goes down a hundred metres, it'll go forward 300 metres. So you can do the math. It's a lot of zigzags. How deep? 100 meters. So the lake's up to 200 meters deep, but this is, um, it'll capture the upper water column really nicely. And what's the purpose? What are you looking for? Uh, well, we've got moorings that have been in the lake for the last four years, and we're quite interested, you know, there's warming of the lake, so I think we're going through a transition where in the future it might not cool below four degrees. This year was a pretty cold winter. The previous year, the lake, the lake didn't actually cool below four degrees. So we're trying to understand, um, this change. Winters in the future are probably going to be less mixing and the timing of the algal blooms will be different and then that how that ties in with the fish, if they available food. So it's a really important time of year. Really hard to get out though. A couple of weeks ago this would have all been frozen. We really wanted to go out a couple of weeks ago. So, um, yeah, I hope we can get this in the water now. So again, forgive me, like how do you, you guys will be able to follow its path? Oh I guess, yeah, yeah, so I, understand it's got a satellite connection um, so a few times a day it transmits the data so like we know where it is we can get the data and Lydia's programming the boat so she can see what's happening and adjust the, the mission as needed it must be great like again this is the first I've heard about it but I mean it must have a good power pack on it well so, so it's called a Slocum glider so Slocum was a it's named after a navigator who sailed around the world solo about a hundred years back. Um, and so it uses, it's really efficient on energy. So it's got a little pump that makes it lighter and heavier. And when it gets heavier, it sinks and then it's got these wings that make it fly forward. So it's not running on a propeller. If you used a propeller, you'd run out of juice really quickly. But by having this really conservative, like changing the pressure up and down you can sort of fly through the ocean through the lake so you typically use these in oceanographic settings and they'd have a much deeper pressure rating you might go down to half a k so because we're going so shallow you don't really glide very much you got to go up and down all the time but if it was in the ocean you could go down a long way and then up and then down beautiful tell us a little bit about the glider yeah so the glider is a buoyancy rated vehicle it's a bit, it operates as an autonomous vehicle so you can send it out um, and no one has to sort of man it at a time, you can do it remotely. And all it does is it collects environmental data, so it profiles the entirety of the water column to a specific depth. In this case, we're going out to about 100 meters um, in depth, and it's going to go all the way down and come back up and collect that environmental data for us. And it's going to transmit it in real time, so you can see what's going on in certain areas of the lake. In this case, we're going all the way across Lake Ontario, and then out to the deepest point in the eastern, southeastern uh, area, and then coming all the way back north. So, and again, if you can, like as Matthew said, this will ultimately help in what way? Yes. Or is well, that I think that's more yeah. Okay, so I got off yeah. Matthew. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So the so the so the glider. Yes. The um, how much does it weigh? Like again, I was talking to Matthew a little bit about it, but I mean, it, it's it's a very specialized unit. Yes, it's quite sophisticated. It's about two hundred. Um, you can actually make it longer or smaller with other bays that you can interchange with, so different sensor speeds, uh, depending on what the goal of the mission is. 
um, 